everyone welcome back to my channel today i'm going to be showing you guys my hand knit sweater collection so you can see a tiny little bit of the pile over here but these are the sweaters that i've kept around since the beginning i think i started knitting garments probably back seriously in 2018 but i think i had started really dabbling in it kind of more in 2016, 2015 maybe. But this is just the hand knit sweaters that I've knit myself. I, this doesn't include any of the tank tops or anything like that. It doesn't include obviously anything that I've gifted. And if you guys have been around for a while, you know I was an avid sample knitter for a while. So I probably knit double this pile here, which I have no idea how many sweaters are here, but as I was pulling them out of my drawers, I realized it's quite a lot more than I realized. But again, I probably knit double this because most of them were sample knits. And if you're interested in seeing what I have knit, you can definitely scroll through my Instagram. You can go on my Ravelry. I always have those things in the description box down below, but it's the same way it's felt here, Lunar Knits by Lori. You can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as well if you really are curious about the ones that I no longer have in my possession, but would someday love to own again, like if they were to Sorry, I am on call this weekend and I've been dealing with a work issue all morning. So that's part of the reason I decided to sit down and film this because the Sunday scaries are setting in, setting in and I've been just working all morning, which kind of sucks because it's Sunday and Sundays are my favorite day of the week. But anyways, I don't know what I was saying and my camera angle is changing. So this new angle is just going to have to work. <laughs> I am sorry, I tried to have a better angle than I normally do, but you guys, no, my tripod situation is janky. I haven't solved it yet, and I don't think I'll ever get a new tripod because I'm cheap. But whatever I was saying before, I don't remember, so I guess we should just jump in because it's gonna be a long video. And I finally figured out how to add pictures to my videos. It's only been, what, four or five years since I've seriously been making content. Finally figured out how to add a photo, so I'll probably put one over my very cute air conditioning of the item on. And we're just gonna dive in no particular order i'm just gonna pull from the top and let's go so this is my nordiska that i knit 2019 i believe 2018 possibly i did a sample of this for somebody i think cozy posy yarn co so i'll also include a picture of that one i have a picture of it on and so i've knit two of these this one was the one i knit for myself it's very tiny literally i've been trying to figure out somebody who has a toddler to give this to so small it did fit at the time and it fit fine because i'm i was basically the size of a toddler but it's very cute i knit this with lane and lotus's yarn i believe um not my color palette at all in fact there is a high school football or high school this is their school colors here oh, i'm gonna get more work messages so just let's just ignore all the sounds but yeah high school football this just reminds me of it so it's not really my thing i do know some people that went to that high school that have children that i'm like ooh, maybe this would be cute for them but nordiska with lane and lotus yarn can't quite remember the colorways sorry but i don't actually think i have a picture of this one on but i do have a photo of it uh, i do have a picture of the other one on though the one that i knit for a sample knit for cozy posy so that's the first one nordiska i I think I pretty much knit it to pattern. Obviously my gauge is much smaller than Caitlin Hunter's because it would have come out bigger and she has a huge gauge. Like she knits very loosely compared to me. So that's the first one. It has this cute cable raglan design, color work on the sleeves, color work on the bottom. Sorry for the shadow. There's a window behind you guys. The lighting's good, but now I have a shadow of the tripod when I try to show you something. Anyways, on to the next one. This is my poof tee that I knit in 2020. I've shown all of these on a podcast before, so I'm not gonna go too into detail about them since there are so many. You can just go back and watch my Lunar Knits podcast from episode one and you will see these sweaters. I actually think there is one in here from episode one. But yeah, this is my poof tee. I can't remember who it's by, but I talked about this a lot when I was knitting it and I absolutely loved it. I still like it. It's knit with, I think, some sort of acrylic yarn, perhaps, uh, from Michael's Joann's. It's striped and it's so soft. I should wear this more. But like, I'm gonna be 30 this year. Is this too, like, 
no it's not I would totally wear this look how cute it is it's a short sleeve it's pretty long it's very flowy can't tell I mean it's not sheer but it's like loose it's a loose gauge if you will but this is the poof tee I knit with a yarn I got from Michaels that's furry so that was one of my favorites for a while I do still really like it I just haven't picked it out in a while and honestly the shadow is gonna bother me I'm so sorry but you guys know my videos can never be perfect usually my tri tripod is tilted last time my fan was making a lot of noise um so nothing's ever perfect on this channel okay this is my ballerina wrap top that I finished in 2020 I think I started it in 2020 as well, but it did take me a little bit longer than it should have knit to knit because I was just going through my stuff. I'm trying to like not have my head cut off with the new camera angle, so I'm sorry I keep moving. But this is by Two of Wands. I did a tiny little knit along with this pattern and a couple of you participated. It was my first one, my only one, because I'm not a knit along kind of gal, I guess. I don't know. But it's just one of those cute wrap tops. It looked really good on me after I finished it, but I've gained weight since then, so I, I'm pretty sure my boobs would just be hanging out. So we don't wear it, but I'm gonna keep it. I bought an exercise bike, so I don't have to actually like go to a gym because I hate going to the gyms here because I know people and I don't like to work out in front of people I know, I guess. I don't know, but I bought a little work workout bike that you can fold up, and so who knows? Maybe I'll be able to wear this again sometime when it fits. If not, I'll save it for a while. I may frog it, make something else with it, or give it to a friend who it will fit. That's the beauty of hand knit things. You could just keep doing whatever you want with them. This one is my Aruhu sweater by Lini Hoy. I'll try to put all the names on the screen as well as the photos of me wearing them. Uh, this I knit with... This, this I knit with something called Lark and Willow yarn that I did a giveaway with while I was doing that project. But but this is my Aruhu sweater by Lini Hoy that I knit with Hello Stella's Van Collection yarn. And it was a tweed. And then I knit, it held double with Knit Picks Mohair. That was in carbon, I believe. So this sweater is really cool because of the details. I'm trying to keep it out of the shadow, so that's why I'm holding it over here. But it has this twisted ribbing that goes from the neckband straight into this cute, very cool triangle. And then it just goes all the way down the back. I freaking love it. And it gets better, you guys. It only gets better. It goes on the sleeves, too. We love to see it. Look how freaking cute that is. Yeah, no line goes down the sleeve or anything. It just has the triangles on the sleeves. I actually wore this a few times right after I knit it. It fits fine, it's a fitted sweater. It's obviously more fitted now than when I first made it. And it's got my favorite bracelet length sleeves. Um, I don't have a lot to say. I wore it a lot when I first knit it. Haven't really worn it since around that time period. I think I knit it in 2019. So yeah, that's my Aruhu sweater. I made a really cool color that I've never been able to capture on you on video or camera well at all. I've never gotten a good photo of this, but again, I will try to put a photo on the screen for you. The next one I have just showed you guys recently. This is a cozy classic raglan by Jessie Mae Designs that I knit with a frogged sweater, my white horse by Caitlin Hunter that I frogged. It was one of my first sweaters that I knit and I never wore it ever, not one single time. Well, actually I did wear it one single time to, I believe it was Thanksgiving dinner and I was uncomfortable the whole time because it was too small. Um, but yeah, <laughs> this is my cozy classic raglan by Jessie Mae Designs. I just talked about this in my latest podcast, uh, podcast episode. So if you guys want to know more about it, you can definitely go check that out. I haven't obviously wore it yet because it's summertime and it's been in the 90s here but I really can't wait. This is definitely going to be a really worn sweater because it's the perfect fit. It's just oversized enough. It's professional looking, it's casual enough. So I'm excited about it. I knit it with Ba yarn in the Les is More colorway and it is DK. I did not help hold this double. Um, I just used DK weight yarn. It's so cute. Anyways, woo, we are powering. This next one is called the Date Night Sweater. This is actually one that I designed and wrote the pattern for to go on Hobium's website. I used to work with a 
yarn company called Hobium and I would make patterns for their blog and they would send me yarn. And this was the last one I ever did with them. I believe it was early 2000 or yeah, early 2019. I may have started it in 2018 and then it carried over, but this I was a pattern that I put out for Valentine's Day. And I actually tried this one on recently. The neck is like this and it never really fit quite like I want it to. But when you fold it down, I decided I'm going to actually go ahead and sew this down. I actually still have some of the yarn, I think, but it doesn't really matter because it's on the inside, but I'm going to fold it down. It looks so cute on and it has this eyelet detail. So I held this with a string of Hobium yarn. It was some random wool in a pale pink colorway. And then I did two skeins or two strands of white mohair. So it gave me this very delicate pink color. And again, this was called the date night sweater. I don't think I could find the pattern now. I don't know. You guys can look it up maybe. Hobia might still have it, but it has this giant balloon sleeve. I was very proud of this one. This is my first real pattern that I did that I, I did some math for and it actually worked out for me. And now that I'm thinking about it, I actually think I'm, no, I did knit it in 2019. It doesn't matter. The next one I'm going to show you is an old favorite for sure. I used to wear this thing all the time and I don't really as much anymore because it's not quite my style these days, but I think it could be my style again in the future and it's definitely one I'm going to keep for as long as it lasts. But this is my Felix sweater, my Felix pullover. It's the one with the fun eyelet raglan detailing. It's really hard to tell with this buckled yarn, but this was knit in Hello Stella's Bohemia colorway. It's honestly at this time period and for a long time, this was my like spirit yarn. I absolutely was obsessed with it and I held it together with Surrey Alpaca from Fort Explorer Knits and Fibers. Allie, her um, al alpaca, Surrey Alpaca, and I think it was like in the linen colorway. So it just toned down Hello Stella's yarn a little bit and it baggy it's a little bit cropped um and the sleeves are like full length pretty much it's so like it's warm it's definitely thick but like it's very drapey and so soft from the alpaca but yeah this one got a lot of wear it smells fine but I definitely haven't washed it in a while so we should probably wash a lot our knits a lot more than we do but we all know it's a process. Next one is going to be a bit of a spoiler if you guys watch my podcast because I haven't talked about this on a podcast. Well, I didn't talk, I did talk about it my last one, but it's finished now. So this is the one I finished most recently. It is, well, it is a, it's a sweater upcycle because I knit this sweater at the end of 2019 and I finished it in 2020. And I had it with short sleeves. This is the Cipla by Caitlin Hunter with a uh, Sweet Georgia yarn. And I basically had a little bit shorter of a sweater and it had short sleeves and I never wore it, but I tried it on recently and I really liked how graphic it was. It definitely fits my style now more than it did then. And I honestly kind of liked the short sleeves, but I knew I would wear it a lot more if I knitted the long sleeves because that kind of was my intention after I finished it the first time. I went back and watched the podcast that I talked about this in and it's definitely one of the things I said I'm pretty sure but yeah I added the longer sleeves um I need to rip out the i-cord bind off that I did she calls for something else in the pattern but it's very tight but other than that it's freaking cute love it I like how it turned out a lot and it's a lot warmer than I anticipated so it might be a while before I get to enjoy it so hopefully it's still my style when that time comes the next one isn't like a sweater per se because it's a short sleeve like top made with a linen cotton yarn which still counts in this category here that I picked out. Uh, this is my, oh crap, it's my Moonset Tee by Ozetta. I knit this, this is a more recent project. I've worn it a few times. I definitely really enjoy how simple it is. It's knit with Mojave yarn by Woolen something I've talked about it very recently so you guys probably know better than I do I just can't remember anything these days it is a top down knit garment and it's a drop shoulder so you do that fun construction and it's really cute it's a basic I don't have a lot to say 
pile is getting scary. I can't believe how knit, many knits that I have. Like, it's insane. Let's just get this one out of the way because it's taking up a lot of room over here. This is my Andy Cardigan by Junko Okamoto, who is one of my favorite designers, as you guys may know. It is a big boy. It takes up a lot of room in my dresser, but we love it, so it's staying. It is just a pretty basic cardigan that I dyed myself, as you can tell. It's definitely... It looks way worse on camera. Like, it's not this blotchy in real life, okay? It definitely probably needs a re-dye, yes, but it's not as bad. Okay, this part's pretty bad right here where I rub my arm a lot on, like, stuff, but I knit this with a Knit Picks yarn that I have a yarn review for, so you guys could check that out if you were interested in making something like this as well. But I really like it. It's uh, Junko Okamoto. Like I said, one of my favorite designers. A lot of fun to knit. Very basic. One of my most worn pieces in the winter. Like, this is a great office sweater for sure. Because it's warm. And my office is so cold all the time. Like, it's been almost 100 degrees here con consistently. And I go into work and everybody's like bundled in a blanket. Like, it's insane. I don't know why they keep it so cold. But this is a great office sweater for sure. It just goes with everything. It's black. I definitely was thinking last night because I started a new sweater that I want to knit a black sweater. Another black sweater because I do have one in here somewhere. Um, but yeah, I love black. So we need that in our life. Let's talk about this one because I also have talked about it more recently. This used to be my Tenya, but then I ripped it out and I turned it into the Posy Cardigan. And... <sighs> I don't have a lot to say about it because I did just recently talk about it, but it is so freaking cute. It's knit with three Irish girls yarn in the colorway My Cherry and More. It's just a speckled pink yarn with some like blue and brown speckles. It's definitely got some texture to the colorway. I love it. It's got cute buttons on it that my friend Jenna made. They actually have moons on the back of them, like they are in the texture of moons with the cute little placket. So I love it. Haven't worn it yet, like out anywhere, because if I'm being honest, I haven't done anything but work lately and sit on my couch and knit. Anxieties have been high, depression's been a little high. So we are just knitting through it. I have found that knitting is definitely that for me. It is really good at keeping me like contained. So I'm glad that I have that to get me through this trying time of life again. Nothing particularly is going on. I just am this way as I sure, I'm sure a lot of us are. So this pile is only gonna get bigger <laughs> until that goes away. But this next sweater is my Drama. I think I started it in 2019 and I finished it in 2020. It took me a while because I wasn't in love with it, but I am glad I finished it in the end. My biggest issue with it was how thick this is. So if you can tell, kind of makes your shoulders look puffy. Some people like that look. I don't really know that it suits me because I don't know, it's like girly. I don't know, it's cool though. Uh, it's knit with, Malabringo yarn. I still have a sweater's quantity of it left, so I definitely need to do something with it. This is a single ply yarn, which is my only single ply item I have, but yeah, it's really pretty. I like it. It's the Drama. I can't remember who it's by, but I do know that that's the name. I was just thinking, if you guys are interested in seeing a video like this, but for the sweaters that I have sampled it, I obviously don't have the items physically, but I do have photos of the items and probably even some video clips that I could probably find of me wearing them. Yeah, just let me know down below if you'd be interested in seeing my sample knitted sweaters or me talk about them a little bit and what they are. Cause like I said, like I said, I have about just as many of those as I have here. So I've knit a lot of sweaters in my short knitting career, including my Zwag by Caitlin Hunter. This was one of my very first sweaters that I knit when I first seriously started knitting in 2018. And by seriously knitting, I mean garments. I knit seriously a lot before that, but I never got into finger knit, finger weight sweaters or anything as intense as that. So this was my swag. This is a yarn by Explorer Knits and Fibers, who when she first started was Ford Explorer Knits and Fibers or something like that. And that's what her name was when... I got this 
it doesn't matter but the pink color which is basically skin color and sometimes I feel naked when I wear this is by Lane and Lotus I clearly have favorites or I did have favorites I don't think that Lane and Lotus or Jen is really dying right now but again I don't spend a lot of time on Instagram these days so yeah I just have a lot of those two yarns because I sample knit for them quite a lot during these time periods so my swag it's smaller than it's intended to be it fits like a fitted sweater which is kind of fine because it's more professional that way and I'm never gonna rip this one out mostly because I don't think I'd knit another sweater in this colorway because again like I said it kind of makes me feel nude nothing faulted to the dyer or anything like that it was just my decision to buy the yarn and make it into a sweater and I still like it I do wear it every once in a while I'm like okay my swag maybe because it's just really cool and it looks really intense. But like I said, that was one of my first sweaters. So there's definitely imperfections because it was a lot. Next up is the Valentine's Day sweater that I knit myself this year. I think it's called Pink Velvet. I can't quite remember. It's by Andrea Mallory. And I knit this with the Farmer's Daughter yarn. I used her Surrey Alpaca for the color work and her Sparkle Base. You can't tell but it's sparkly for the main body color and great sweater it's very like I don't know it feels very girly um, but not too girly I mean obviously it's pink it just gave me a feminine feminine chic vibe that I just like to feel on Valentine's Day I do actually really enjoy the holiday of Valentine's Day I really like the kitschy holidays that aren't like so family oriented which sounds so bad I mean we all love our families we all have different relationships with them, but the kitschy holidays were always the ones that were played up more in my family rather than like Christmas and Thanksgiving. Like obviously we celebrated those things, but the more Hallmark holidays my mom made a lot more fun. Like Halloween, she was so into and it made it very special for me and Valentine's Day, same thing. So I don't know. I just enjoyed the sweater. I didn't get a chance to wear it this year. I didn't have a Valentine. And I sat on my couch and ate chocolate on my own. But that is a great one. The next sweater we're going to go with. Ooh, this is by Spostrico, but I can't remember the name of it. This video is going to suck to edit. Like, I don't love editing and I'm going to put a lot of stuff on it because I can't remember anything. But this is by Spostrico. It's a free pattern. This is the front, actually, because it is a split hem. I knit this back in 2020 and this was knit with nitpicks wonder fluff yarn i might have started it in 2019 to be honest with you it's a pretty basic raglan a little bit longer like a swancho style but not quite that long with the higher neck which now i'm thinking might be cute if i roll down as well i'll have to try it on that way and yeah not a lot to say about it very basic again it's a free pattern they have changed their sizing a little bit on it since i've knit it but i really like the wonder fluff yarn I talked about this a lot whenever I had some of it. I haven't like ordered any in a long time or ever. I just found it at a sale one time, but yeah, I do really enjoy it. And it's very comparable to the, it's very comparable to some more expensive yarns. I've done a yarn review on one of them. I just can't remember the name right now. Like I said, I don't remember things very well, but I do the best I can. The next sweater is another one by Junko Okamoto. I think this is the only other one that I have by her. Why do I feel like I knit? Oh, I'm literally looking at it right now. So I have one other sweater by her, but this is my Igawa sweater. I don't know how to say it. It's just a huge boxy sweater, tons of like short row shaping stuff happening, a v-neck. I love this sweater. It's green. Green, I always get told is a great color because it brings out my eyes. But I never gravitate toward green. I don't know what it is. I have a lot of plants that are green, obviously, and I love those. My bedroom when I was a kid used to be blue and green, and I think that's kind of my aversion to it now. I went gung-ho for it for so long, and now I'm just like, okay, green. But I absolutely love my green sweater. I think it's my only green sweater. So I should probably knit another one. I do have more green yarn. That I need to use. I'm just waiting. I think I want to knit like a St. Patrick's Day sweater next year or something. Who knows? But it obviously looks like it pulled a little bit in the middle. Overall, love this sweater. It was really fun to knit, but it definitely 
can be a slog. It's a ton of knitting. I think this is three skeins of fingering weight yarn and I used pretty much every inch of it. I just knit until I was out and I still don't think it was to the exact length, which is fine because it's still, again, huge. And you can see the short row shaping really well there. I would honestly probably knit another one of these. It's a great sweater. I wear it quite often in the transitional months as well as winter. I don't really have a period of time in which I just wear certain clothes. I just layer a lot. I like layers. So one of my sweaters that I've had for quite some time, oh gosh, I, I had to have knit this in 2018, maybe 2019. Feels like I've had it forever. This is my, it had to be 2018 because I remember I was living at one apartment, but I guess it could have been at the, toward the end of that lease. It doesn't matter. This is my no frills sweater by Petite Knit. And it is knit with hedgehog fibers as this, their singles, or not their singles, but like their fingering base. And then the mohair that I use is by Knox Yarn Co. I freaking loved her yarn. She hasn't died in a while. I think she had a baby and so she just kind of retired basically. But I, if she started dying, I would honestly buy some more of her yarn. And I haven't, like I said, bought yarn in a while. Um, I said that on a podcast, not here. So I don't know why I keep saying, like I said. But yeah, it's really cute. I don't have a lot to say about it. It is just a very basic sweater. It's one of my ones that I grab because it's so neutral. It's gray, but it has colors in it. But the grays like really turn tone it down. It's not like, it's not like my Felix sweater. That's just all up in your face. It's definitely just a neutral, good knit sweater, which I do find that my choices have been generally like something that I can wear for a long time. They're not too, too bold where it was good for a moment and I'm probably never going to wear it again now. Um, even when I was picking out yarn for the new project I'm working on, I was like, I'm so glad that I chose a lot more solids and basics. Yes, I do have some speckles and stuff, but I never went crazy on that. And the color palette that I used to choose is still as good as it is now. So I'm very lucky that my stash has still grown with me and I'm able to use it. I know that some people aren't able to have a stash and I am so thankful that I do have a stash because I can generally knit something new whenever I want because I just shot my stash. I haven't bought in yarn in like two or three years at least so it's felt really nice to just go back and look at all these sweaters and see how they've still grown because my choices I made at those times. So look how long these arms are. I am so glad that they're like full length because a lot of my sweaters are full length because I like bracelet length, but it is nice to have a full length sweater. Moving on, I just have a few more. We're gonna go ahead and do another t-shirt. This is one that I did fairly recently. I think I finished it in 2021. Um, I think I started it in 2020 though. It's got this in the back. It's the Cloudsley sweater and I knit it with Sweet Georgia flaxen linen silk. And I haven't worn it since I finished it because the sleeves, I either need to re-block them or just rip this whole thing out. The sleeves, they're not doing it for me. Again, I haven't worn it since I finished it, so I don't know if it's changed. But the yarn is really fabulous. It's so drapey and lightweight, and it would be nice to have a garment I'll actually wear out of this yarn. So I need to go back and try this on again. And just evaluate what I want to do because honestly I would make another moon set tee with this. Uh, the color choice is bold. At the time I had this shirt that I really liked and it looked really good on me. It was a it was an orangey mustard color. Definitely more on the orangey side though and I wanted to find a yarn that matched that. Buying online is a little hard and when I went with the colorway pumpkin I thought it would be a little deeper but it is pretty in your face bright but I think it still compliments me. Um, it brings up the blue part of my eyes more than the green. So, yeah, still nice. I'm saving my favorites kind of for last. So, I don't know why. They were just at the bottom and so it worked out that way. But the next one, this is the first sweater I ever started. Not the first one I ever finished though. This is, honestly, in the grand scheme of things, this is a more recent finish. But I did start it back in 2016 or 17. And this is my tea leaf cardigan by Bristol Ivy. I did this with a Craftsy knit along class thing and that was great. I'm so sad that Craftsy went away because I really do feel like their classes were really great for beginners. I used the course all the way until I finished the sweater 
and it even has pockets. I do actually wear this quite a lot in the winter months to work. It's a great work sweater. I'm gonna have this thing forever. It's knit with worsted weight yarn. It's got lace. It's not exactly to pattern and there's tons of flaws in it, but it fits as it should. And it's got my bracelet length sleeves and it's honestly a really great sweater. Not really my style per se. It was never really my style even when I first started, but overall, it's a really great piece for my wardrobe and it's everybody needs a work sweater I feel like if you work in an office space or somewhere where you have to dress more professional it's great to have pieces that fit your office work environment it's nice when they can transition into other places of your life but I think it's nice to just have something that's strictly for office wear I don't know I like it a lot it's definitely on the top of my list of sweaters that I'm glad that I knit and I'm glad that I finally finished it Moving along to my other Cozy Classic Raglan by Jessie Mae Designs. I, I just finished this one this year, maybe. Um, I think I started it, I couldn't even tell you the dates on this one, but it is knit with Explore Knits and Fibers, which I've had in my stash for a long time, held together with a mohair by Knit Picks. And yeah, I actually think this mohair that's in this was like, the leftovers from my Overhoo sweater and then I had to order some from Knit Picks. And I think that that is the last time that I bought yarn is when I had to order the extra mohair for this. So there's really nothing to say about it. It's a very basic raglan sweater that I've already talked about, but this one is fingering weight held double with mohair. And it's bracelet length fits a lot different than the other one. It's much smaller because I only had two skeins of this yarn and girl, I used all of it. That is on that, so. We're getting down to the last three here and I'm going to go ahead and talk about this one right here. This is my, a wrap, I don't even know. I couldn't tell you. It's something spider themed sweater and I love this. This is great. This is, I need to knit another Halloween sweater because I am a Halloween girl through and through. And so I absolutely love wearing this sweater in the fall time before Halloween. It's the right size honestly I might rip out the ribbing and knit it longer because I have I have a lot more of this yarn but I have two little balls of it that I'd like to just use up and I was thinking about knitting a little hat but I thought it would be nice if I just added it into the body of this because I do ideally want it to be just a touch longer it's not by any means cropped on me it definitely hits up my pant line but I do like a baggier sweater especially when the rest of the sweater is baggy and I think the modification I made, I made several modifications to this, I think. I just made it boxy, there's no way shaping, and I did the sleeves as a bubble sleeve because I thought it was more dramatic for the sweater. I love it. It's knit with all Knit Picks yarn, so yeah. Not a lot to say about it, but it is a good Halloween sweater. A lot of people have knit it. It's kind of mundane to knit, like the color work gets a little old by the time you finish. Very easy to like see what you're doing. And I like the stark contrast. Overall, flawless sweater, my favorite for seasonal sweaters that I've knit. I definitely wanna knit more seasonal sweaters that are more personal to the season because my other ones like the Valentine's Day sweater isn't necessarily Valentine's Day. My Easter sweater isn't necessarily Easter, it's kind of spring. But I would love to have one with like bunnies on it or something. I want to be that person. <laughs> this is my Birkin sweater by Caitlin Hunter. It's, this is going to be an heirloom for sure. It's knit with Quinson & Co. Is that the name of it? I'm pretty sure it's the name of it. Quinson & Co. Quinson & Co. Yeah, I have a yarn review for this yarn. As well as a finished object sweater just finished object video just for this sweater. And it is a floral color work sweater yoke. And then it's just very basic and I love it. It does have a split hem. It's a great sweater. It's very nice quality. I'm very proud of myself for knitting it because there's three strand at color work and I don't love color work. Like I know how to do color work. I feel confident in my color work, but I don't enjoy color work that much. Which you could argue seeing all the projects that I knit. I am definitely a finished object knitter. I more than a process knitter. I'm starting to fumble over my words. So I need to get on to the last sweater, which is probably my favorite sweater I've ever knit. I don't wear it like a ton, a ton, 
anymore I used to when I first finished it but it's definitely my like go-to like show off sweater it's, it's cool it's the rug sweater by Junko Okamoto this is actually a free pattern I think I knit this in 2019 at the very end like I squeezed this one in at the very end of the year and it is a super fast knit it's a free pattern like I said it is one size fits most and the yarn that I used is Knit Picks' Wonder Fluff yarn, which I highly recommend for this sweater because this is a huge piece. And if you use something more like a, a heavy weight rustic yarn, it's going to be heavy. So just know that. Like, it's going to be really warm. And this is really warm, but it's, like, light. If you guys can't tell, it's a blown yarn. So with the color work, when you have all of those floats, let me show you you know, it's going to be denser because you have two colors going. So this honestly doesn't feel dense though. So highly recommend going with like a blown yarn if you plan on making this sweater. And I do recommend making this sweater. It's a great pattern. It's a lot of fun. It knits up very quickly. And there are some long floats. So you do need to cut your floats if you feel so desired. You don't have to. And with this yarn, it is sticky. So I don't really, I find that the they like stick, they stick down. They like felt themselves down. Like, yes, I can stick my finger in there, but their desire is to be clung on, <laughs> if that makes any sense. So I love this sweater so much. It's like the perfect fall campfire sweater. So make yourself one. <laughs> All right, that is my hand knit sweater collection. That is everything I keep in two drawers of my dresser. They're about this size. And I really shove them in there. I don't know what I'm going to do if I keep making sweaters. I'm going to need to figure something out. But I'm going to count those up and I'll give you guys a total on the screen. I'm really glad that I did this video because it's definitely inspired me on what kind of sweaters I like, what I want to make more of. I forgot about some of these sweaters and I want to wear them more. So let me, get, let me know down below what your favorite sweater in my collection is. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button for more random content, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!